Hey guys, a couple people were asking for a commentary on Midnight Lights. Thought the behind the scenes stuff was pretty good. So uh, I'm here with uh, Lee, Yo. who plays uh, J uh, Quincy. We have uh, Casey, of course, plays Eddie. Yeah. And we have uh, my AD assistant director, Rayon. Don't watch Have You Met Harry. Yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, we're going to get started. Don't watch uh, this if you haven't seen Midnight Lights already. Because it's obviously going to be spoilers. We're going to say stuff that comes up beforehand. All right. Uh, and we're going to start now. So the music we used in this uh, opening sequence was uh, it was actually from this TV show called We Bear Bears. Went so hard. Yeah, I didn't expect it to actually. I, just, I was just in the shower and then I had that idea. That's usually how I get a lot of these ideas when we're making the movie, and it turned out pretty well. <laughs> what are you guys laughing for? Yeah. Anyway, and then we have the. Can we not laugh? Oh my goodness, bro. I'm sorry. I, 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 I like the symbol with the nose. Yeah, so the bandage, of course, and the smart. Yeah. The red thing below is the, like the tip of the nose, right? The red thing's smart. Oh, okay. So we've got that typical joke of smart. Anyway, so this opening shot here, obviously, it's the isolation we got. And um, Lee's just in the corner. I think he's dying he's of laughter. Dying himself to sleep. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> So this whole bus sequence was actually really hard to film. The first time we oh, did it, yeah, we spent like three days scheduled it really badly, and we had three minutes to do the whole scene. Obviously that didn't work, and we missed our bus stop. We tried getting on the bus, and they got on the bus, forgot to hit bus stopping, and then they didn't get off the bus. It was a disaster. It was really a Horrible. mess. Oh, we had two different days of filming that shot. Uh, yeah, two yeah. different days. And, and, and we didn't even days. use any of the first day's shots. Except for one shot at the very end. It really sucks because like, I wasn't there. Yeah, he wasn't there. Um, but something I like to do... Color, so the colors in this movie are very important. Uh, uh, we like to call this Morphean lighting. Yep. Yeah, uh, so basically, green. the green is obviously a representation of good. You know, kind of like how we had Man in Red, and um, the color of blue at the start is representative of isolation and loneliness. And the red we have when he kind of scares the girl is like red is a representation of both anger and love, and how those two emotions get really mixed up sometimes. You know, I really liked what we did with these shots. We had a lot of grain and stuff. Looks like it was uh, shot on film. Yeah, which it wasn't. It was shot on digital. Um, so this shot here, we actually have Ved and Shamika, who play Jet and um, the boyfriend, respect respectfully, uh, later in the movie. And uh, we got this shot here. That shot's kind of silly, I'm not going to lie. And um, <laughs> I was flabbergasted. Yeah, he was flabbergasted. And yeah, then we have this quick little cut thing. We know we don't. That's, that's a bit later. That's my bad. I'd but, um, say, does this mean your wife's up for grabs? This scene pretty much shows that I'm like a class clown. Yeah. Yeah. Like, chill with Everyone loves it. Yeah. We wanted to establish that earlier on the film. This whole sequence was actually a lot longer, but uh, we shortened it down for time. Uh, and we have something similar to that later where he hallucinates himself. We originally got to film it, but then no one showed up. Yeah, no one showed up. People just aren't reliable. The oh. drone shot. All right. Oh, so this is the best shot in the movie. Yeah, uh, it probably, probably not is. the best, but it's still very good. So the original idea for the drone sequence is that we'd actually go inside the house and we'd film, you know, stereotypical him getting him out. I knew with his dad. But then I, I was just looking outside the window of the house one day and I was like, what if we used uh, Shamika's drone? Uh, Shamika's very useful. He's got that great drone. And we just, uh, we used it as a means of kind of moving around. And we obviously have kind of like this splitness with the different framing. Oh, yeah, it works well. It predominantly. You can see the yellow on the right side and the mixed blue and red on and the right. And I told Rayan to use green film so we'd have, you know. Yellow a bit of looks good nonetheless. Yeah, but the meaning of yellow in this movie is abandoned. I know, I know, I know. Right? But I guess that works because his, mom, his leaves. mom eventually leaves, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't tell Shamika that to move in. That was completely in. intentional. I didn't, I didn't <laughs> tell Shamika to move in for that shot, but he did. And it works great. It works. It's like. Well, yeah, the it's, setup. The set, yeah. yeah, it's like pretty much. With the dad, almost like it, it mm. moves in with mm. the dad. Just I'm works. pretty sure it moves out as well. Yeah, and uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, we had a phone in there, and from outside, I was telling them how to do it, and then later on, I discovered Casey. Could you explain what it sounded like through the phone? And all right, so basically, we hear. Okay. Ah! Why did you mess up the shot? <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's probably pretty accurate. Um, and then we cut right here. It's a very subtle cut, but it's in time with the music, so it works. And this is just, you know, it's just one of those, you know, directorial epiphanies you have, mm. you know? It mm. just works. And this title card was a complete right, yeah. accident. The original idea was just a normal moving title, but I accidentally edited it wrong in post, and then, you know, it turns out like this, and yeah. we had different footage of the lights, and... and like, think? it's midnight lights? Like, yeah, uh, yeah, with the midnight lights? It works. Yeah, it works. It works, it works, it works. And I thought this is easily the best title card. Yeah. Easily. Yeah, and it works. Um, yeah. Ah, this scene. So we filmed this in the Docklands. 
because uh, they said you need to get some variety with the uh, way you're filming. Which is fine. Which is, yeah, it's facts. So I decided to film it here. Oh, yeah, Kaysen, you came up with that, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I kind of just chose that. All right, explain this. All right, so originally, the scene here uh, was just him saying all these jokes, but he was saying it, you know, actually at the dog fights. This but when we were recording in post, it looked really bad. Yeah, so it looks terrible. So, on the last day of Kaysen's being in my house, because he stayed over, much like with Missing Memories, uh, we filmed this scene really quickly. He doesn't have the band-aid. I didn't realize that until we were editing, and then I realized that works. It works perfectly because... It's, it's symbolic. No, 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 no. It's not even real. It's how he imagines it. So I say, sure. And we agreed to watch it on Friday, right? Friday. Next Friday comes along. Yeah, Friday so they have these cuts uh, on purpose. I like to do those kind of cuts. Uh, people have epilepsy, you know, that's too bad. <laughs> I'm, I'm busy. And I'm thinking, hey, 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 wait, wait, wait. Anyway, um, you know what he says? You slow yeah. Turns to me. <laughs> so we kind of, um, <laughs> right, so the swear words. Um, when I showed this to my parents and then, uh, Baird's parents, Baird, Baird's parents being the people who play Casey's parents with in the movie, uh, they weren't, they didn't love the swear hey. words. But then my dad kind of justified it saying, well, if these people are smoking, you know, if they're drinking, and they're freaking beating each other up, <laughs> if they say the F-word occasionally, what's the worst that can happen? Exactly. That's lucky fact. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Anyway, uh, Rayan, you're way overdoing it. I should have told you on the day. Shut uh, up, you didn't say anything. <laughs> funny, okay, that, that cross uh, might be a bit complicated. Can you explain that, actually? Right. So, basically, the idea with the cross is, of course, uh, you know, Jesus Christ sacrificed himself for humanity's sins in that, right? That's the, that's the idea. So, Eddie kind of bears his own cross. The cross is like the greatest symbol. And I feel like, you know, it's pretty self-explanatory in that regard. Yeah, so basically, Eddie is Jesus. That's not where I was... That's <laughs> yeah, not where I was... I know, okay, I know, I know, I know, I know. Yeah, I know, all right, know, but anyway. So, with this sequence here, well, let's not lie. It looks freaking phenomenal. Yeah. Um, and the silhouettes just work. Now, if you, if you notice, obviously, the lights of the windows are changing. And that kind of links back to, you know, the color palette, right? right? Right now, it's pink and purple, which is kind of representative of, like, the emotions and love. And, oh, crap, there's a black spot in there. Do you see that? Did you see that? There was, like, oh, there was a small gap where, oh, it's fine. You know what? It's fine. The black spot is actually purposeful. The black spot is actually purposeful. Uh, don't worry about it. Everything in the movie is intentional. Everything I did is intentional. You just, um, if, you, if it looks like a mistake, you just don't get it. You don't, you don't understand it. Yeah, you don't yeah. get it. But obviously, yellow light here. It's transitioning to yellow, of course, representing abandonment, because he's pushing away Bella, I mean, Becca, sorry, by making these jokes. I'm giving Bianca's characters way too similar names to her own names. <laughs> Change the names. It's just BBB. <laughs> that shot actually looks really good. Eh. No, I don't love it. No, because of the amount of lights in the back end and how it's yeah, out of focus. But it's, uh, oh, this one, this is a very good one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So obviously we have the cut here, just kind of to emphasize that abandonment. And, and obviously we have a cut to isolation. Blue. blue is representative of loneliness. So we kind of moved on from the kind of simplistic idea of lights within man and red, which is red and green, and that's it. This has a more broader spectrum. This has pretty much the oh, entire yeah. So Josh's character is the same one that uh, in Pretty, pretty good, good Week. Yeah. So this takes place... Prior to Pretty Good Week. Yeah. yeah. So, of course, this is all part of the ACU, the bigger <laughs> cinematic universe. Um, that definitely exists. Yeah, of course. Once, uh, once I make enough of these, I'll, make, I'll drop a timeline video. This! Case, um, would you like to talk about the cigarette uh, process making? Oh my goodness, this took forever. I told them to get, like, hemp roller, like a cigarette roller, and then we ended up getting it, and we tried to actually make it smoke. It did not smoke at all, and we are like, alright, it's fine, whatever, and then we couldn't roll it properly. Until his dad just randomly pulled up with two, like, <laughs> perfectly rolled joints. Yeah, I don't I know. Like, I bet. Yeah, how did he... That's... <laughs> I don't know. That's well, not... Uh, I ignore move it. On, move, <laughs> on, move on, move on, move on. Oh, yeah, and we barely anyway, ended up using this. As you can see, we've got a perfect example of Morthian lighting here, mm, which refers yeah. to when you use the light stick in a glow effect. Almost which, like a lens flare. Almost like a lens flare. I'm like J.J. Abrams. Right? Damn. <laughs> Respectfully, of course. Um, Mission Impossible 3 was alright. Okay, it wasn't that... Um, obviously, we have the transition to blue here, and I, let's just say, honestly, I think Josh is really good. Oh yeah, Josh uh, is really. He's good. a he's a he's a great actor. And the Balti Bridge in the back is just. Mm. Yeah, that that was an uh, that was something I googled. I said great spots in Melbourne. Said Balti Bridge. I knew it lit up at night. I uh, looked online and you know, I decided to do that. And it, it all worked, really worked. But damn, it was freezing, freezing in the Docklands. Oh, yeah. Ridiculously cold. See, if you notice, uh, Kaysen, Josh, everyone, they move 
particular occasion. No, yeah. No, I mean, it was Josh who like didn't enunciate his words. Because it was so cold. Yeah, but also occasions moving a lot just to uh, you know generate heat. Obviously, we have the transition from green to red here. Obviously, represent that we've gone to the dark side, oh, kind of like Darth Vader, if you will. Okay. This one's a little more orange than the. Yeah, I'm about to say it's sort of looked way better. Yeah, I. That was like an editing issue, but uh, it's purposeful, of course. Yeah, you, you just don't get it. You don't get it. Another We're example of Morphean lighting. lighting. It's going to be taught in film schools in like 20, 30 years. I promise you. Oh, that slap was the seventeenth take. Bro. If you look at the bloopers, uh, yeah. there's a part where yeah, yeah, we, we finally get, get the slap, and, and then really Rayon, you came in and you said you needed to piss, and then screw up. Oh, no, 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 no. Let me let me explain this. Tenth take, very cold, freezing, my face red with the palm mark of Josh or Jack. As soon as he goes, I say, "Full power it." He hits me. Contact. I'm very angry and pissed. I turn around. Perfect looking. Rayon, I need a piss. Are you serious? <laughs> hey, we ended up getting it. We ended up getting it. And um, the cool. idea of the uh, lightning strikes. Um, now we have a lot. This is film directed by Michael Mann, who also directed Heat. Um, 2006 film Miami Vice. Now, there's a review for it where they say, it thunders a lot in this movie, but it never rains. Of course, that's a line that Josh uses uh, within this movie. And I think it's just great. So obviously we have a lot of thundering. And um, you know, it adds to the atmosphere. You know, it's that tension that we want building. This scene. So um, we had actually a whole sequence where, see, you can see me in the background, where I just get beat up. And it was representative of like... Me being angry. angry uh, me missing the bus. Yeah. And then I decided... Um, he didn't get on. I decided no. Too long. It made the movie way too. <clears throat> um, but yeah, the pacing I'd say with this one is pretty all right. Very quick. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I I don't plan it. it just happens. Oh crap! Freaking eleven minutes in the movie. Hey, hey, Doesn't feel like that. So this um, uh, Eddie's out. Eddie's uh, mom and dad are played by uh, Vance's Vance. mom and dad, and uh, I just want to say they did a really good job. Oh yeah, phenomenal. And, uh, yeah. and um, this idea I had here was kind of uh. From um, Fellini, um, in uh, the movie Eight and a Half, he has this effect where it turns from a POV into a third person shot, and um, I kind of re 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 uh, replicated that. When we go from his POV, the camera literally moves it out, turns around, and we're seeing his death. And the whole point of that is just kind of to like show the reflections between um, Eddie and his dad. Eddie hates himself because he doesn't like his dad. And that's what the whole conflict of the movie is. So the music we're playing here is, um, I think it's called Cure for Pain by Morphe. And we start off as like a, a radio playing it essentially, but then uh, we slowly mix and wait, it gets wait, more wait. emotional. Baby Casey. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, baby me. Yeah, I had to print out this A4 sheet of paper on the day of Casey looking like a baby. And, uh, looking, looking, like looking like a baby, he was a baby. He was a baby, yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's wrong with the ink splotches on it? Oh, yeah. The frame has that. We've used that same frame for Having Met Harry. Every Man movie in Red. The frame. Every movie with the frame. Yeah, freaking all of the uh, movies with the frame. And yeah, I mean, he's crying. He's this one's a very good one. The background's red. Yeah. This, uh, yeah, 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 it's actually the, the And the, what's it called? Yeah. I wanted to put a lot of um, grain on this one, and I think it works. It kind of. It looks a little bit like film, but also kind of enhances I the think digital thing. The music in this is perfect. Mm. I know, obviously, it kind of closes off his thing. His eyes shut, his opens eyes back in Eddie's perspective. Yeah. And it's out of focus, Eddie. of course, because he doesn't know who this guy is. And we like to come back into focus. Um, yeah. I wonder if this guy can count. That is a suspiciously low angle. I think we had to redo that three times because he just pretty much kept teabagging the camera. Yeah, yeah, that happened. And, um... His line delivery on the next line is... Is, is, is alright. It's, it's alright. I should have given him more direction. Yeah, that's what yeah. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, you know, for a period of time, Bradley was actually supposed to play Kaysen's character in the film. But, um, luckily I re reached out to Kaysen and, uh... Luckily? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm just saying that, uh... Yeah. 
It was good. It was a, it was a good choice. And I like the little, um, what do you call those? The, the focus. Oh, the focus. So. Morinthian lighting, bro. Yeah, the Morthian lighting. Of course. <laughs> but I forgot my name. What's your last name? <laughs> yeah, I bet you don't even know my second name. The last name? Oh, second name. I don't have a middle name, bro. I'm not Clay. <laughs> okay, bro. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, this is, yeah. Oh, let me explain the shooting of this um, thing. So oh, we're filming in a right. so a vendor, a friend of mine. This is this is the same uh, location dad, that we filmed um, on the, the diner scene in Madden Red. Yeah, exactly. And um, us as dad, we had like a fifty minute thing. It was only five pm, so it wasn't dark. So I had to put. Uh, you can see those black things in the background. That's like that's bed sheets put over the the, the window to uh, block out the light. Of course, uh, this is uh, Kenny and Marissa. They were both in. Harry. Was Kenny in Harry? Yeah. yeah. It was. Oh, no, it no, it wasn't. He definitely wasn't. Are you sure? Oh, he was in the other. Yeah. Okay, no, no one should go check. Alright, go check. Anyway, this, this scene I have to act like. We had to speed run this. It was a lot longer, a lot more dramatic, a lot more extenuated, but we completely got rid of all of them because he said like, we, we had. Respectfully, bro, look at me. Hold on, wait. We had. No, oh. stop. <laughs> we had like. um. We had like. A very minutes, short amount of time. Three yeah. minutes to film. Oh, no. Yeah, um, <laughs> the girl, Marissa, she did not, uh, I don't think she knew that line. Yeah, and she was shocked, flabbergasted. But I think she was actually impressed. Oppenheimer. It, it, it was a good, it's a good line. It is a very funny line. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I love playing menaces. So this, um, this shot here, it was filmed in the Glen. But during the filming of this movie, we at least went to the Glen at least 11 Damn. times. And uh, we filmed it just out of this place, outside of this place called the Boily Crab, and luckily it had this kind of uh, neon lining. This neon Blue and red lit neon. Yeah, oh, and uh, it worked. And the reflections on the water at the ground, which was wet. Quincy, I think your character's. Uh, yeah, I think your character's. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. No, the trace sequence yeah, with the yeah. music. No, um, and then I hit him with the rock's eye brown. So the, the chase sequence, the way we filmed those, which you'll see soon, they're at a low shutter speed. And it's kind of um, it's kind of like the filmographic. Uh, Step printing that um, Wong Kar Wai uses in uh, like Fallen Angels, that like, uh, Chunking Express, those movies. And uh, I thought it was a great effect and I thought it worked well here as well. I just wanted and, to know um, where you got the music for this scene from. The music was actually from this one movie called End of Watch with Jake John Hall and Michael Pena. Oh, great film, yeah. 2012 film, I underrated. Know, I, I it was played at um, it was played. Hey, well, the, okay, so we have um, wait, wait, wait. Johns and Forces here. Alright, so mm. yeah. explain the shutter speed change right there. Yeah, well, obviously he punches him, so the shutter speed goes up. Also, like he now realizes that they're not there. Yeah, mm. they're in forces. Yeah, it is actually kind of scary. No. Sometimes, sometimes. No, <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> I think Verd kind of forgot what he was going anyway, to say. Yeah, you can see because he's like pausing between the lines. Eddie over here, if he didn't get our money by midnight, yeah. I mean, that'll be a delivery. That's some great delivery. No, no, no. I feel like if, um, if I had taken the, the F word out of there, it might have been a little bit better. I feel like it's got that accentuation though. Alright, so we did the oh. scene by just pushing oh my goodness, the camera Lee on the trolley. Is so fast. <laughs> oh yeah, like, <laughs> holy shit. So we, we jumped into a trolley in this scene, and uh, Kenny pushed me. And um, it didn't really make much of a difference because of course we had this very weird shutter speed thing going on, but um, it works. But Lee and, uh, is so fast that you'll yeah. see upcoming, when I'm running up an escalator, oh. he runs up the opposite one. <laughs> Let me talk about the uh, the filming for this uh, for this yeah, sequence we'll here. Get back to it. So basically, um, we filmed inside of the Knox shopping center. Thank um, God it was empty. Yeah, there wasn't much people. We set up cameras in different places. We set it exactly this time, 7 p.m. Everyone hit record, and then they ran. We did it at least maybe two or three times. And we have this timing with the no, framing here. Yeah, how tired we were after. Yeah, you guys were knackered there. And um, yeah, some shots we redid, like that one in the diner sequence. Man, there's some footage out there of me jumping over the railing there onto the thing. Oh, yeah, we, we were going to use the trolley for this scene as well, but then the we security guard. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we got. We okay, got look, look, onto he's the running other. up the thing. You can't see him until his head appears for one frame. <laughs> oh my goodness. So the security bro. guard actually said no. He was surprisingly chill compared to this other security guard that we met at the actually, Glen, what, bro. who Mets got head. so angry. Just see how fast it did you ran. I got oh, out of this so fast. Bro was running faster than Lee. Anyway, though. the next, the next yeah. scene is up. So this oh, yeah. scene, uh, we li I like to keep really blue to emphasize that loneliness, of course, because it just looks good. And um, Also, it looks cinematic as. So this line from Kenny, where he says, Hey, Romeo, hey, Romeo. is a reference to the film Shame, 2011, which uh, it's, it's a great film. Um, that, I don't know why that handheld from a low angle just looks cinematic. Just works. And of course, Where did he punch him? 
in this Now, color. here's one thing you might not have noticed. Uh, he's wearing blue in this scene, when right before he was wearing red, yeah, he made the joke that, uh... This MF really got changed just to beat my heart. He just got changed to beat him up. Yeah, I was getting jumped. Damn, it was so weird. This scene was so good. What was the music? But at one point, we just stopped faking it. Just we like just started kicking him. Angel choirs slowed down eight hundred percent. Why does he look so greasy? Man, Kenny's biceps are so nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he is. Uh, he's a ripped. He's a ripped individual. Of course, you can see his um, silly art eyes. Um. <laughs> <laughs> he said, "Good morning." <laughs> oh no, no, no! Oh wait, how long were we filming the, the first day again? Oh, first day was like a twenty-hour shoot. Yeah, twenty-hour yeah. shoot for the oh, first day. Oh, and if you could notice the the guy uh, jumping up and down, Sean. Yeah, someone was. Uh, they were messing about, just you know, pushing him up. Anyway, these know, shots here, how we filmed back. these, basically was. Uh, my phone, sit it up inside mm. the car when we're going home, put it on time lapse, and you get this great like light streaking effect, which is actually in pretty mm. good week, but in a much lower, less um, a good. good. There's also <laughs> in the end <laughs> of um, Man in Red. Mm. And the music we use here is from uh, the film Drive, 2011, great film. Um, it's in. I think it's one of the scenes where he's, where he's like, "I drive to Irene." Oh yeah. And um. There's something. Okay. And um. This is kind of the emotional oh, climax. Well, the, really good. the lighting. Lighting, yep. Multi and lighting, of course, in full effect. Oh, we used child's labor for this film by getting someone, Sid to um, hold the camera. <laughs> I mean, the light. We didn't. Sid yeah. was holding the light for one of them. Was, was he? Yeah. The yeah. So, anyway, um, all our movies are made using child labor. Uh, no, don't say... He said that, not me. Rayon Sedgwell said that, not, not a dating Christian mother. Hollywood, please hire. Are we children? I don't know about that one. Yeah. What were you saying? What was I saying? I forgot. <laughs> I actually didn't know his name was Eddie. Uh, if... Oh, the bandage. I'm oh. trying to gander what that means. No? It oh, really is. It just represents a mask, I guess. Yeah, I guess. There, there was an original ending to the film where he just rips off the bandage. And we were like, yeah, that's the one. Then I was editing it and I was like, no. no this ain't no, this is not, not the one. one. And the actual ending sequence... Um, which will get you soon. Which will get you soon is um, well, worse obviously. Oh, it's film. And um, it's it was uh, it was an it was just an idea I had, like with missing memories. The ending for that was just an epiphany I had. We had recently just watched her just before I was about to leave, and then on like the last day, he was like, "Yo, we got to redo this one ending. It was gonna be really good. And it's gonna have the her music in it." Yeah, and it turned out really well. Uh, and hers, uh, it's quite a good film. So. Oh yeah, W movie. Mm. Of course, we had the uh, stock footage sunset here. <laughs> no, we filmed that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we filmed that over we, the uh, Californian we, forest here. Yeah, yeah, bro, yeah. that's the Sahara. Oh wait, that's, that's in New Zealand, bro. No, you can see the New giraffe. Zealand? You can see the but stereotypical the Australian the giraffe over there. Yeah, that's a good shot, uh, and I'm not going to credit the person who used it because I forgot. But um, <laughs> it was me. <laughs> All right, now this is the ending. Mm. All right, so we like to you know start out of focus, of course. I think we filmed this what four or five times, maybe. Yeah, four times. Probably. And um, yeah, I like I wanted to get him in a really emotional state, so we were very quiet so when we were filming. Him in the face. <laughs> we were also quiet no. while we were watching. Yeah, we were yeah we were very quiet. Everyone yeah. was just paying attention. It was it was weird. You don't see that usually. Mm. Um, yeah. And um, yeah. So I almost fell off my chair, but that's irrelevant. Yeah. So obviously we got the belt here. Which is my school belt. Um, uh, kind of a noose. Yeah, so it's obviously in the shape of a noose. Yeah. Implying his, his, you know. Implying that I'll kill myself. What do you do with noose? What he nooses? did was he had me watch the scene from... Oh, A Star is Born. There's Star a... Born. Uh, spoilers Cooper. for A Star is Born. Uh, 2018. Uh, Bradley Cooper's character kills himself. And it's this very sad scene. There's Bradley. no music. There's no music. He just uh, he gets the belt. Uh, closes the garage. And it's pretty grim. And I wanted to kind of replicate that with this, but this has more of an ambiguous ending. Um, and it just, it just works. And obviously, we have this kind of music where it's not quite happy, it's not quite sad, it's 
It's neutral. It's ambiguous. It's neutral. Yeah. Exactly like uh, what we want with the ending. Mm -hmm. And, um... Obviously, and then obviously we have the flashes. Yeah, the flashes of all his memories, and... It's kind of 50-50 on whether he wants to kill himself or not. I'm, I'm personally okay with either ending. I, yeah. If he kills himself, amazing. If he doesn't, Wait, also what? amazing. Well, no, I prefer Oh, the... you mean quality-wise? Yeah, 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 yeah. I thought it was... Uh, I had this idea for an ending where he does kill himself, but we kind of shut the door. We just hear, like, the sound of the... Did you, did you already play the... No, one yeah, take that I actually almost hang myself. Yeah, we did do a take. Uh, I didn't tell you him to do it. Just... Oh, wait, wait. Uh, uh, right there, right there. He 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 like kind of crouches down, but we didn't use that. My idea was that actually he would kill himself. We'd hear the thing, you know, tightening from outside. Cut, uh, cut to black, cut back in the bus where he was sitting at the start, empty seat. And he just told me it's too grim, and it is too grim. You know, we don't want to. This isn't a weird, you know, European art house. Film, <laughs> you know? We're trying to keep it light and happy with the. Uh, abuse. The implicit. <laughs> and also, the implication mm, of suicide. What's it called? The it colors good. in the scenes previous match up with his emotions right now. As They're very cold. No, as he's watching it. The colors oh, have changed. Oh, as he, oh, it's yeah. not the same yeah. thing. Also, if you notice there, the door, the handle of the door shut. There's no aspect ratio on that because that's actually the implication that he might actually open the door. Man. Kenny's so handsome. <laughs> yeah, agreed. And uh, I think that smile That's that Kaysen does is really... It's, uh... Good it's all you need to know. It says everything, doesn't it? And of course we have the... Uh, um, the and the music, bro. And the, the slow music. transition to, uh... The to drums. pink. Either he accepts his life or he accepts his death. Both yeah. are. I have, I, have, I have the feeling that because we kind of showed all those positive emotions... For those positive things. Like, for example, we actually used a blooper of Josh in that one shot where he's smiling in the mouth. That's not from the movie, that's a blooper. And um, it kind of suggests maybe he's looking at it from a, an altered perspective. Yeah. But what's wrong with looking at life from an altered perspective if it gives you a reason to keep living? Exactly. Mm. W message. A fact. Yeah. Um, Who is yeah. Tony? Me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Tony. Yeah, it's Tony the characters the didn't have names, but they were there. Tony and Donnie and that. <laughs> hey, Jack. my name right. Did I not spell right? No, I right? said you did spell right. Last time did I not spell right? Nah. No, Drone no, camera no. work? Yeah. No, and I spelled my name right. Yeah. This was so... Like, they put like an H in my name for um my Italian class. They put on my certificate. Like, like I got an award or whatever. They put an H <laughs> in Lee. <league. laughs> so extra. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah, thank you to yeah, everyone that worked yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, I was about to say special thanks. Yeah, thanks to everyone. Appreciate that. Uh, thanks to uh, thanks Aditya to me and me only making us part of this. Yeah, yeah. no worries, man. Pretty. Uh, yeah, thanks for being here. Thanks for that pizza. It was thanks nice. for <laughs> offering me the. All right, well, thank you too for too uh, for listening to the commentary and also ramble on. This was so scarf. Whoa, Whoa. <laughs> uh, buddy. Yeah. Anyway, so why is that video? Watching? Yeah, I'd say out of ten, <laughs> I compared to the other movies, it's probably the best one. It is either this or missing five. memories. Actually, wait, no. I, I didn't feel like a single bit of that was unentertaining. I was fully entertained yeah. the entire time. Mm -hmm. Alright, so it's either this or missing memories, which is like Liam probably... Huh? Yeah. Oh, right. yeah, right, and sure. Anyone have like anything else to say about it? Uh, I'd say... I, good job to Casey. Good I job really, to everyone in the movie. They all did a great job. I did job. not read the script. I read it twice. Lily? She's a standout. Oh, yeah. She freaking... She memorized every action she had to do. And cycled through all of it in 30 seconds. Seriously. Yeah, no. That was impressive. Yeah, and there was two female characters in this film, did you? Three. Three? Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh okay. yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, so it's a, it's a step up. I'm not coming on <laughs> So it's a step up from all the other movies. More diversity in that. Mm -hmm. uh, Ved's mom said I need more white people, so if you're <laughs> yeah. listening... If oh, you're yeah, white some and white you're listening... People. Henry! Stop. All right, all right. I think that's going to be it. Thanks. I'm Thanks for everyone listening. Bye. 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 Bye.